Hello, and welcome to the Five Core Life Podcast with Will Moore, founder of More Momentum. In today's episode of the Five Core Life, Will Moore is talking about how to gamify your life, level up your habits, and gives one-to-one coaching with some of the Five Core Lifers just like yourself. If you would like a chance to be coached live by Will Moore, make sure to follow the Five Core Life on Instagram at Five Core Life and tune into the lives where you could have a chance to get some one-to-one coaching with Will himself. Go ahead and subscribe to the Five Core Life so you get notified when episodes air. Are you ready to fire on all cylinders? If so, let's go. Um, Okay, here's a question. Hello, how are you? How do you deal with stress with a busy day? Well, it's a pretty good question. Uh, Stress is one of these things that we, uh, we, we naturally have this like, we need to get things done and things need to be a certain way. And as we get old, when we're kids, we don't feel that way. There, there's not really stress. I mean, there's types of stress, but not the stress we feel as adults. When we're children, it's like, how can I have the most fun today? How can I suck the, the most amount of light and love and just awesomeness out of this day? And then as we get older, it's, oh, I gotta get in my dry cleaning. Oh, did I... Did I pay my bills? Oh God, the stock market just went down and we dwell and we stress and we think about things we can't control. So best way for me to give you advice on on how to get around that, where's Sarah? I don't know where she is. She's she's a no-show so far, so hopefully she shows up in the next couple minutes. Um, uh, But advice, become a growth owner, not a fixed victim. Fixed victims are the ones that have the whole poor me, my life sucks. There's nothing I can do about it. <laughs> and versus the growth owner that basically says, okay, I am the master of my domain. Anything around me is in my control. And right now, just because something's not going well doesn't mean it's not going to. And that I can't, don't have power to change it. So the idea is you essentially take that it's it's a perception thing you take whatever that stressor is that you can't control and you say how can i use that moving forward to make me a bigger better faster stronger person maybe there is something you can do about that particular stressor and you think about proactive ways to do that versus just sit there and dwell and stress and use all your time and energy which just puts you down in that failure loop what i call it uh, gratitude journaling is very important. Uh, let's see, what's your preferred method to get out of the victim mindset? So yeah, I don't actually journal, although I guess in a way I do. I, I keep score on my life each day. I gamify my, my existence. And at the end of the day, I actually, um, I'm aware of the different areas of my life. I call them the five cores that you wanna make sure you're continually working on, building momentum in, growing, finding balance in. And I have certain habits that I call the failure habits within each. And I have certain habits that I want to replace called the success habits. And so each day I have, I've got my top ones that I'm working on and I review them in the morning and I remind myself what I'm grateful for, uh, which is always during my mantra, which is I, I have it stacked with my shower when I'm stretching. I also do my mantra, which is all the things that not only I'm grateful for, but want to remind myself are important and need to work on moving forward. Um, And then uh, at the end of the day, when all is done, I kind of review and say, hey, how did it go today? And I just say, right now, I'm building an app that's gonna make this all really fun gamified, even more so, but for now, I'm just using my phone in the notes section, and I literally just put down my score for the day, and then I'll write down what was the best part of the day and what was the worst part. And that just kind of helps me get into that space of putting a spotlight on the things that I did that were good um, to do more of, and the things up, Messed up there, need to, tomorrow, need to be better there. All right, secret of my success. Okay, that's easy. Uh, It's first getting your mindset right, and it's not an easy thing to do. But if you can literally, over a period of time, figure out how to become that growth owner I talked about earlier versus a fixed victim, which everything kind of revolves around, then you'll start being able to fire on all cylinders in these other areas of your life. You'll start getting rid of the habits that are killing you because you realize that's a fixed victim habit. Why would I want to do that? And you'll start replacing them with success habits. That's the shortest way I can answer that. Uh, Okay, but I'm getting lots of questions. What do you think a good product to sell would look like? So the answer to that is when you when you look when you're considering like if you're gonna start your own business, 
and something that you actually want to build, you need to not look at what's going on and chasing other people. You need to look at where you think the future is headed and you need to look at trends in society. So for instance, I started this company called Doorstep Delivery about 12 years ago. And at the time, the iPhones had just come out. Food delivery didn't exist other than your standard pizza in Chinese. And this was way before Uber Eats and way before DoorDash and way before Grubhub and all these and all these companies. And we decided, you know what? There needs to be a better way for people to get food. And now everybody's got these phones. They can just order right there on their phone and we can send our drivers. And so that's how it developed. And because we were ahead of the curve, we didn't even have to raise any money. We bootstrapped it. We did it ourselves. And we ended up getting, once these bigger players did come in, we realized, okay, well, we can't compete with that. And we just got bought out and exited. So that's my advice for sure, is to make sure that you're, you know, looking at where the future's headed and something like an iPhone or, you know, new devices that are coming out and, and new trends and sort of say, okay, where's this going and what product are people going to need in relation to this? Going through divorce and I feel like I'm in a funk. What do you suggest in the past this moment? Okay, so... That is exactly kind of, we were actually talking about this earlier, like the fixed victim, how easy it is. Our brains want to just like feel sorry for ourselves and dwell and just get riddled in this anxiety and awful feelings. And it's, it, it's like, it, it's kind of counterintuitive, but we really do. Uh, here you are, I'll bring you in. Uh, we really do, our brain, for whatever reason, we actually want to feel bad and we want to kind of stew in it. Um, because it makes us feel, it gives us short term dopamine hits to actually like focus on it and be like, yeah, and like come up with scenarios of how to like make the other person suffer or how, you know, you're going to do this or do that, you know, but none of that stuff is, is actually helping you. It's just prolonging the inevitable and you're dragging things out and you're putting your time and your focus on things that isn't going to help you grow as an individual. So the key to me is figure out, okay, this is obvious. What did I learn? from this as the growth owner in you. This was an awful situation and, um, but you know, it wasn't all awful and I'm, I learned and I grew and what can I take from that to use moving forward to now find somebody else in my life, if that's what you want. Um, and, to, and now I know exactly, you know, the more so what I'm looking for. I know the qualities and traits maybe that I need to work on for myself. Oh, to, to, so as far as downloading the app, go to the site more momentum m-o-o-r-e momentum.com guys when it's out it's not out yet a month and a half two months will be ready it's gonna blow your minds it's literally it's a game and you're 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 tricking your brain into want into hit getting these little dopamine hits into getting these rewards into wanting to level up your rocket ship to go to the next galaxy to go to the next solar system to fight through asteroid fields to meet aliens along the way and as you're doing it you're leveling up not only on screen but you're leveling up in real life so Get ready. Nobody else is doing anything like this. It's going to be super exciting. Uh, okay. Here's another question. My business is going, to, going in all sorts of directions, which is great, but my wife and I are trying to multitask and it's getting exhausting. Okay. Good question. So as I always say in this day and age, there's, it's so hard to focus, especially with like all the technology. I, I bet whoever's watching this right now has probably – three or four pieces of technology other than the phone or whatever you're watching me on around you. And there's always just, I call it these like shiny wiggly things, just dancing in front of us, trying to get our attention. And to be able to follow through on something is harder than ever to have that discipline because there's so much low hanging fruit to grab. Like, Oh, I want to watch that show or, Oh, maybe I should go this direction or, Oh, maybe I can make money with my business that way. You need to focus. You need to have goals and you need to say, okay, this is where I, ultimately want to be and this is the business that can take me there how am i going to get there and it's going to shift it's going to change along the way but to have a focus and to have one core aspect of that business is important don't get sucked into the low-hanging fruit of maybe we should do this or maybe we should do that just be confident in what it is that you're building and focus on just one sole method of doing that and just do that better than anybody else do that really really well rather than trying to get into a bunch of different things and not doing them so well. So for example, when I owned Doorstep Delivery, the restaurant delivery company, we decided we'd, we'd go into alcohol delivery, right? Why wouldn't we? I mean, it sounds, it sounds like a no brainer. Like everybody loves to drink. Everybody um, wanted to order. We were getting all these requests. And so we put like six months into 
developing the software and the systems and partnering with with certain um, local uh, liquor liquor uh, stores and working out the regulations and the rules and all this. And then we launched it and like three people used it. And we were like, what, what is going on here? And we didn't do our due diligence and we got caught up. And meanwhile, it was our, the rest of our business was suffering. And so we ended up just scrapping it and getting back to the meat and potatoes of our business, what we do best, which is, which was restaurant delivery, food delivery. And we started growing and we expanded and then we went into different areas and different territories. Uh, how do you properly, so for, from Karam Mazir Amir, how do you properly plan towards your goals? Great question. Uh, you've goals in general, I mean, the, just the, the act of creating them helps to give you that structure and kind of take away those things I was just talking about, those shiny jiggly wiggly things all around you, those low temptations and low hanging fruit, like, oh, I'll just go spend 10 minutes doing this or, oh, I'll just do this. And all of a sudden a week's gone by and you haven't hit any of your short-term goals and you're not if you don't do the, hit those you're not going to hit your medium goals and your long-term goals so you just gotta you gotta get them on paper and you gotta have them somewhere you can see very clearly they don't have to be it doesn't have to be a novel just this is where i want to be in three years this is where i want to be in in one year this is where i want to be in six months this is where i want to be in a month and then that starts really making it crystal clear the actions that you need to start taking one by one in order to get you there. And you can't just, everybody wants to just hit a button and flip a switch and get for nine ninety nine get get their lives taken care of for them. And unfortunately, for the most part, they can do that. You can get anything delivered. You can get yourself delivered in a car anywhere in the world. Uh, you know, you, it, it's, it, it is becoming uh, an on-demand society where you can pretty much get what you want. But what you can outsource is your happiness and the key to happiness is to continually be moving and growing yourself. And the best way to do that, that I know is to set goals. And by setting goals, you're, in, you're, you're basically guaranteeing that you're going to keep moving and working towards that goal without goals. You're just kind of floating along and you're let as a fixed victim, you're letting life pull you in any sort of direction. All right. Yep. Absolutely. The way to go. Agreed. That's actually another example. Somebody asked me what, what business or what should I focus on? What product? The reason I'm doing an app is the exact same advice I gave you all earlier. Uh, like, just like I did with doorstep delivery, I feel like I'm spotting a trend now with the wellness and that, you know, like the Apple watch with the rings and uh, Peloton and all these things, it's, they're being gamified. It, 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 these companies, these large companies are trying to gamify your, your physical health, your emotional health, your well-being, And so I'm trying to encapsulate all of that into these five areas, which I feel like a lot of these companies are ignoring. A lot of them just focus on the physical health. There may be like the, the, you know, the stress and the breathing apps and these things, but it's like, what about your relationships? What about your mindset? What about your emotional health and giving back and your career and your finances? So I'm encapsulating all of that together. So I'm super excited. Hey, how are you? Hey, what's up, man? I, li I like your screen name. I'm so Thank worried. you. So yeah, I used to follow this page. It's going good over here. I used to follow this page earlier. Its name was "You Can Have Success," right? If I'm not wrong. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's that's what the name used to be. And it was being run by Red, Red Coats. Yes, yes. Red and I actually we both still on the page together. Um, but I'm he stepped back. Oh, I'm so you are a friend of Red. What's that? So you are a friend of Red. Yeah, yeah, we're friends, and and I um I do a lot of the lives and, and the interviews and stuff like that. Oh, okay. I used to follow this page earlier, but I so you know I turned off the Instagram and now I'm back at it. So I was like, uh, I have seen this page earlier. It's a really good page. You know, it gives me a lot of positivity and energy. Love it. I appreciate that, man. Thank you very much. Well, is there any yeah, thank particular you. question that I can? Um... Yeah, I do have a question. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Excellent. So nowadays, like I'm, I'm having this feeling like, you know, uh, where I have to do something, uh, you know, I have to do something, I have to change something. I just can't sit over there. And when I sit over there, you know, I just keep overthinking. It's like, I'm going to explode. How can I overcome that feeling? Rephrase that. So you, you, are you, it's like an anxious feeling. Re ask that again. It's like, uh, when I'm sitting over here, basically just overthinking shit and not doing the things. I'm just sitting over here. I want to do, but I'm not doing. It's like something in my mind. How can I overcome that? Yeah. Got it. Okay. So this is extremely common. We, we were kind of talking about this earlier. Like 
most people just, they never take action on their ideas. And what that does is that creates anxiety and stress because it's like, you know, there's something in you that needs to be let out. Like that there's, there's stuff that you can do that you can contribute to the world. You can make more money. You can, you can give back to the world and then have a great product or whatever it is that you're doing. And when you're not taking those actions, it doesn't line up. Like you're, you, it ties to what I was saying earlier. Like you gotta have goals. You gotta be moving forward. And you're, if you're not moving forward, if you're not growing, you're dying. And so the way to get that out is you need to, um, I, my, my first advice would be to figure out your, make a list of your strengths and your passions. And like, so these are the things you're really good at. These are things you're really super excited about and love. And then, you know, figure out where do you want to be in the next 10 years, five years, three years, one year, and, and, you know, set some goals based on just like have a long term. I would say go out three years and then a one year and then a uh, six months and then a one month and just sort of say, okay. And then it's like, how do I get now? How do I get there? And then literally every single day, just force yourself to start taking actions. If you already have a business idea, start developing it out. If you don't have one yet, just, you know, start talking to people, start reading, start learning, just start absorbing. And then what's going to happen is by taking actions, things are going to start coming to you and you're going to develop what I, I do call, I call a desire backed by faith. And you're going to get this insatiable drive and you're going to be like, yes, this is it. This is what I want to do. Just like when I figured out my old company doorstep delivery, I knew it was going to be successful and it was just a matter of time before I got there. And just like I'm doing now with the five core life and my app and the book and, and helping people to live their best lives. Like I know it's going to be a big thing and it's going to catch on. I just haven't gotten there yet. Right. And you have to have that, but you got to keep every single day taking action because things don't happen right away. Right. You can't just hit a button and yeah. become rich and famous. And honestly, you wouldn't want to anyways, because if you did, you wouldn't have earned it and it wouldn't feel as good and you wouldn't know what to do with it. Okay, thanks for the uh, solution. I have one more problem. Like, I don't wake up early. Whenever I wake up early, my day is very, very good, you know. But uh, usually I wake up late when, uh, like, at 8 or 9, uh, you know, my day, you know, it's not good. So I'm like, I'm regretting. I have to go exercise. I'm late. I have to go do the work and all that things. Uh, any tips on how can I wake up early? Because I sleep a lot. I sleep at, like, 11 and I wake up at 8. I just can't get up in the morning. <laughs> It bothers me a lot. Yeah. So how old are you? If you don't mind me asking. I'm 23. 23. I'm 23. Yeah. Um, yeah. So sleep is one of those things. Yeah. You want to get in a good habit of getting a good night's sleep. The, the things that I've learned, number one, I mean, you can try. Have you tried going to bed earlier? Have you tried that? Like going to bed at 10 and then that way your body's getting an extra hour of sleep and you might be able to get up. I mean, at the end of the day, Getting up isn't, there's few people that I know that like spring out of it, that roll, wake up, open their eyes and spring out of bed. In fact, I don't think I know anybody that does that. So just know that, you know, it's not going to be the best feeling. You wake up, but maybe, you know, give yourself on your alarm clock an extra 10 minutes to just sort of wake up. And what I do is the habit that I have is I read, um, I have this, this app called Flipboard and I have inspirational articles so i don't read all the crap that's going on in the world like bad politics and the riots and the deaths and the killings i focus on positive inspirational stories and because that's all I've, I've selected for it to show me and i kind of it starts to get my brain going and then i start to wake up and then that kind of leads to me going okay i'm ready for my coffee and then that kind of helps get me out of bed um Versus just get waking up and being like, oh, my God, I got to get up, you know, like give yourself uh, maybe have like a little routine that gets that helps wake you up and you're still in bed. So you feel like you're not being forced out of bed. But then once your mind gets going, then you're going to want to get out of bed. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, like I do when I wake up, I drink water and sometimes, you know, a hot water with some lime. But sometimes, you know, I just couldn't get it out of the bed. I think uh, one thing I, I don't do is uh, I use phone before the bed. I think I need to cut out my phone. The blue screen, you know, it hits you. The melatonin decreases. I need to work on that, I think. Yeah, well, you can get glasses. Yeah, I see you have glasses. You can get blue screen glasses. I have those, and they, they help with, to reduce that. Make sure, like, there's a certain type of lens. If you don't have that, you're going to want to get that. Um, and I see... Yeah, these number. are the... What's that? These are the blue cut glasses. They are? Yeah, yeah. So, so do they not help 
Are you saying you don't want to look at your screen when you wake up? Or you could read a book too. Same type of thing. Like something that you know next to you that you can read if you don't want to look at a screen. And, and I, I, I'm sure that's probably yes. a better idea. For me, I like this book. Think and Grow Rich. Have you read Napoleon Hill? Great book. I've read that probably <laughs> 10 times. Um, that is amazing. I mean, you want to talk about a growth owner mindset. That book, it's kind of disguised as a finance book. But really, it's about having what we were talking about earlier, that growth owner mindset of just like, I am going to create in my mind who I want to be. And I know that there's nothing and then I'm going to create the person to get there and there's nothing can get in my way and I'm going to become an unstoppable force until I do. By the way, Willie G, um, the tools in, for the Flipboard I was talking about. So you actually, Flipboard's an app that you literally can select what types of things you want to see. So if you just want to see inspirational stories, um, if you just want to read about video games, you know, if you just want to read about um, parenting life. Uh, but again, I suggest click on stuff that's positive. Like don't get sucked. You don't want to start your day getting sucked into all the muck and the killings and the political, you know, polarization of the world. Uh, you know, you just want to get into something that's going to start lifting your soul and kind of get you like motivated to be like, all right, I want to get out of bed. So you just select a few of those topics and that's all it will show you. That's what's cool about the app. Like it doesn't, whereas Apple news, I think maybe you can do it on Apple too, but I, I don't use it as much, but it just shows you the most trending stories that's going on. And a lot of times it revolves around death and destruction. All right. Is, is there anything else? Uh, the, any other questions you have? Which book are you reading currently? Uh, I'm actually reading, I've got several books that I'm reading. So I'm reading Atomic Habits, again, by James Clear, which is a fantastic book. I like to, I've, I've, this is my third reading. Have you read that one yet? Yeah, I've read, but only the fun time, but I am not following it. <laughs> but not, it's a really good book if you follow it. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, I, it's, it's good and it's about habits. I'm kind of taking a lot of the principles he's doing and trying to simplify them into, he shows you how to form the habits and I say, okay, these are the yeah. five main areas of your life. These are the habits you want to change. Now let's use some of his principles to change them. I'm also reading, or my next book on tap is Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. So, I mean, I have, here, I'll show you. This is my, this is my reading list. So I've read probably a quarter. That's amazing. Quarter half of those and the other half I still have gotten they're on my list to read and read, I also read, have read, some books. nothing better, nothing all... better. nice these are my books nice. oh. so that's have you read any? so that, well, as you're reading I suggest take notes that's a big thing that I've always done that's really helped me like don't just read because what's going to happen is if you're not taking notes on things like if you start because like I was saying earlier you want to start to formulate a plan an idea of like okay maybe this could be a business and it's like okay then you write down like sort of a little a little phrase or like the gist of maybe this could be a business and then you just start adding to that and as you're reading these books you start to become inspired and you're reading things and you're writing things down you're like oh maybe this can work and then like you're sort of creating this sort of structure of okay this is what this business could look like versus like i said with all the low-hanging fruit going on right now you read a sentence it inspires you until you read the next sentence or until your, your phone rings or until you, you play your next video game. And, and then that, that idea is gone forever. It's gone. And you'll never yeah. be able to get it back. So writing that things is, uh, I have my, Generally, I have a marker. I, you know, underline those sentences. Uh, you know, I make the short notes over there. So when I read the book again, I just read them, not the whole book. So that saves the time and, you know, gives the idea to me. Yes, that, that's, that's a good way to do it as well. Yeah, as long as you go back and read those highlighted notes. Um, I use my phone yes. now, like as I'm reading, I literally have my phone open and I have like, I, I take notes on every book I read and I have like, so I have like a different, and then I put them into these folders. So every folder, and then I go back and like when I'm working on parts of my book or I'm coming up with an app, a blog idea or something or, or a post idea, I kind of look at these and I get inspired by them. And it, and it helps me not only with that stuff, but just in my life in general to remind me of these things. Like obviously if, if it stood out to you and it was enough for you to highlight or to write it down, it's something worth revisiting. And the way habits work is until you perform them enough, until you've taken that action and you've done it enough times, it's not going to form part of, it's not going to become part of your life and it's not going to become useful to you. So you just got to keep taking action on it over and over when you find something that, yeah. that hits. 
give you an example you know when i went to the gym for the first time i did only one push up next day i did two then five ten then there was a point i was able to do 100 push ups 100 push ups at the time you know that's how you know continuity persistence keeps going on the law of compounding my friend that's how it works right <laughs> you start small Absolutely. and you just but you got to keep going action 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 um i see somebody else recommending a few books seven habits of highly effective people great book personality plus haven't read that one thank you um all right man well listen it's actually it's 11:30 so we're, we're we're wrapping up thank you for coming on and actually asking some legit questions i appreciate it yeah definitely we'll meet sometime again soon yeah. so yeah good night to you it's all 10 a.m. or 10 p.m. over here it's what time 10 p.m. over here 10 p.m. nice okay yeah it's early here it's only um it's 11:30 a.m. here so yeah uh, so you day. you need to start your day. Yeah, I'm just getting I going. Hope you have Great to meet you. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you bye everybody bye. else for for tuning in and joining and this was a good session today because it had some some really good questions and I was able to answer some good stuff and interact with you all. I I enjoy these. Like I said, I want to do more of these. In the meantime, stay safe. Don't forget your five cores, live in the five core life, firing on all cylinders. It's all about your habits. What are they, my friends? Put a big old spotlight on the bad ones and let's start replacing them with the good ones. Catch you next time. That's it for the five core life. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like button on this video and pound that subscribe button so you get notified when new episodes drop. Also, please fill out the free five core life evaluator quiz. It's a great way to get a baseline of where you are and the five cores and which of the five cores you need support in addition, you'll get some actionable advice that you can apply and start improving your life in the areas that you need it most. That's it for today's episode of the Five Core Life Podcast. Have a wonderful day. Get moving. Gain momentum. Join the movement. Join Emmett by going to moremomentum.com to take a free life evaluator quiz on where you currently stand in each of your five cores. 